You're listening to a podcast from the BMA. Each year, thousands of medical students go abroad as part of their medical electives to the developing world. The BMA has produced two pieces of guidance aimed at helping students. The first looks at preparation and the second looks at the cultural and ethical dilemmas that students may face while they're on their elective. To discuss this guidance, I have with me Louise McMenemy, who's a medical student from London and a member of the BMA's Medical Student Committee, and Dr Abby Smith, who's a junior doctor from Bristol and is also the deputy chair of the BMA's International Committee. So before we go into both pieces of guidance in detail, we're just going to take a quick look at what they cover in general. Louise, can you tell me what the planning guidance actually covers specifically? Yeah, the preparation guidance in general looks into planning your medical elective as well as funding and general organisational side of planning a medical elective. Abby, can you tell me what the international ethics guidance actually covers? This small toolkit provides something that students can digest before they go and take with them, which gives them a bit of guidance on how to actually approach any ethical situations which might arise during their electives. It actually addresses a variety of different issues, but it includes working within the limits of your competence, working with emergency situations and dealing with cultural differences. Thanks, Abby. Well, if we actually turn now to the specifics of each guidance document, and we'll start off with MNC's planning guidance. Louise, can you tell me what you think actually the key thing is that students need to remember when they're actually planning their elective? I think the key thing to remember is that you need to start planning early. Some of the most popular hospitals and locations fill up years in advance before people are to go on their electives. So if you want to go and do a specialty that's very popular, for example emergency medicine, or to a location that's very popular, for example Australia, electives need to be planned well in advance and therefore it's important to sit down with this type of guidance even a year before you're planning on leaving and think long and hard about where you want to go and why you want to go there. Funding is something that a lot of students have mentioned to me is quite important. Um, what does the guidance actually say, say about that? Funding is crucial. It's important to plan a budget before you leave. Look at how you're going to fund flights and how you're going to fund your accommodation and any tuition fees whilst you're away on your elective. Many students apply to different organisations for funding, either be through bursaries or grants, but they don't provide the correct information to these companies that they're applying to. And it's important to read through very carefully the forms before sending off for any funding because you may miss out on the option for funding when you're actually eligible for it just because you've missed out something small on the form. But the guidance puts together a list of different places that you can get funding from so it's a useful resource when planning where you're going to go and how you're going to fund it. Okay. And leaving aside funding and obviously the early planning stage, is there anything else that students probably need to bear in mind in which the guidance helps them with? Yeah, the guidance is a good resource to look at health information and travel arrangements, um, indemnity cover whilst you're out of the country, um, and it also contains some very useful checklists so that you know before you leave whether you've covered all the things that you should do. And is it intended to be used in conjunction with some guidance that's offered maybe at the medical schools as well? It definitely should be taken in conjunction with any guidance that's given by your medical school. Your medical school will provide guidance for you whilst for when you're planning and when you're gone, but also for the assessments that are expected of you whilst you're away. So it's important not just to look at the BMA's guidance, but also the guidance provided by your medical school. I know that overall we're talking about students going to developing countries, but I think the planning guidance can also be applied to anyone, even if they're also planning to stay in the UK. Yeah, that's correct. It's important to remember that although people do choose to go to developing countries and have amazing experiences there, there are options to stay within the UK, stay within Europe or even go to America, where again the healthcare systems are completely different to the UK, but maybe don't have the same ethical dilemmas as you might find in Africa, for example. It's important to remember that even if you're going across the channel to France, there's a completely different language that you need to know to be able to take a comprehensive history Uh, whilst you're over there so although the guidance does look at the ethical guidance looks at resource poor countries the planning guidance can be applied to any elective as we said be it staying in the UK or going to America. Thanks Louise well now we'll move on to the international and ethics guidance on the sort of situations that students will face when they're actually out in um, developing countries. Abby can you tell me maybe the key things that students need to remember when they're actually there and have actually begun to take part in their elective? Yes Well, when students arrive in their elective, they're suddenly immersed in this new culture and a different health system. And we all need to remember at that point that different areas of the world have different expectations from doctors and medical students. Now, whilst we need to work within this system, students need to remember that the ethical code of conduct which they actually are working by is the one which we'd use at home and is set out by the GMC. 
students also need to remember that they still need appropriate support and supervision, even if it's not the norm in the country that they're in, but they need to work within the GMC principles, as I mentioned. Um, but whilst obtaining all this support and supervision from their host country, they also need to remember and be mindful of the impact they might be having on the health system in which they're working. So there's a lot for students to consider while they're abroad. I mean, you've mentioned there, I thought briefly touched on it, the issue of culture. I mean, are there any top tips that students need to remember in this sort of area? Yes, well, being immersed in this new culture and this new health system is probably one of, in my opinion, the most valuable experiences students can actually have when they're on their elective. It gives lots of new learning experiences. Um, I think what people need to do is really approach it with an openness and a respect. And also, there's no need for, pe- for students to sit and think things through on their own. Their clini- the clinical support that they have there are probably very open to discussing different cultural differences and any issues which the students may have while they're abroad. So I'd say my top tip would be be open about differences and discuss them with fellow medical students, junior doctors and even more senior people while you're there. And I mean, students do also have responsibilities when they're actually out in these countries as well. Is, is that true? They, the students have responsibilities um, to many different people while they're out in the country. They have responsibilities to fulfil the aims of their placement. They have responsibilities to work on what they're meant to for their medical schools at home. In terms of the responsibilities they have within the clinical setting in the country that they're in, they need to discuss those with their supervisors out there and maybe clearly define them at the beginning so everyone knows where they're at and they're all working from the same page, so to speak. Yeah, and I suppose finally, I mean, I think you may have touched on this already, but if medical students are unsure about anything, because it can be a very challenging environment when they first arrive, what do you think they should actually do? Well, I really think that students should just do what they do at home. At home, if you had a problem, you'd turn to someone for help, so you should do that if you're abroad as well. Probably the best thing to have done before going on elective is really consider what potential situations you could get yourself in and discuss them with a tutor at home before you leave. In addition, or in the absence of that, there are people around when you're on elective, whether they be the people that you're staying with, the clinical tutors that you've got there, or the person who kind of organised your placement for you. You can always go and ask them for help, and in my experience, from my elective, they're always very reasonable and more than willing to listen and provide advice. Well, thank you, Abby and Louise. If you're interested in getting more information about either sets of guidance, then you can email the BMA at internationalinfo at bma.org.uk or you can have a look at the BMA's website. The preparation guidance from the medical students is available at www.bma.org.uk forward slash students and the ethical and cultural guidance from the BMA's International Committee and Ethics Committee is available at www.bma.org.uk forward slash international.